this wonderful tradition that recognizes the Hellenic roots of democracy. In addition to these democratic ideals, which are sadly being diminished around the globe, we are here to acclaim and remember those whose commitment to the cause of liberty and democracy cost them the dearest price of all, their lives. These people are the immortal heroes of 1821, who like those of 1776, and those of every generation who have been willing to lay so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. We say eternal memory. We say eonia in nimi to all our brave warriors for peace and justice. Mr. President, you have been long time a close and trusted friend of the Greek American family, and we consider you to be one of our very own. Even from those very early years in Wilmington. But you are so much more than our beloved friend. As president of our great country, you have led the world in championing freedom and the sovereignty of nations. You continue to be the leading advocate for the cause of our Ukrainian brothers and sisters. The people who are still fighting for two years now for their very lives against the unjust and inhuman invasion of their land. You continue to stand with Ukraine, and for your unbreakable and unshakable support, we are very grateful indeed. Also, as sons and daughters of the Mother Church of Constantinople, our ecumenical patriarchate, whose longest serving leader in history his Old Holiness, the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, your friend. <laughs> Mr. President, your friend, His Old Holiness, counting on you as a beloved friend. And we thank you for your unwavering support of the purely spiritual mission of our Ecumenical Patriarchy. Mr. President, we thank you for your commitment to Greece and to Cyprus and for a just and peaceful solution to this island nation that has been scarred by the violent invasion and forced division for half a century this year and for a solution that will abide by the international law and a rules-based international order. We are on your side, Mr. President, just as you are on the side of democracy and liberty. May God bless you, Mr. President, together with the First Lady, your family, and our nation's armed forces, with health, long life, his abiding grace, and his invincible strength. Long live America, long live the Greek people, Zito i Americhi, Zito to elinico est. Now it is my incredible honor and privilege to present to all of you the President of the United States of America, Joseph R. Biden. Thank you very much. I should start by saying the only reason I'm able to stand here is because of the Greek community. That's not hyperbole. I won my election as a 29-year-old senator. I know I'm only about 40 now. But 
the 29-year-old senator by 3,100 votes, as my sister Valerie, who's here, will tell you, managed my campaign. And as we're, you always look in Delaware from, you work politically from south to north. And I was coming up from Del Mar, Delaware, checking all the polling stations on Election Day in that November in 72. And I got across what they call the canal, the Delaware and Chesapeake Canal. We that's used to C and D Canal, the Chesapeake and Delaware. We call it the other way around. And I was losing. And uh, I got into Wilmington, and one of the uh, — please move all that back, by the way. One of the things that I, I learned early on was that uh, I had a very close relationship with the Greek-American community, for real, in the heart. And we, I mean, real, and the church there as well. And uh, I think if there were — I forget the exact number of votes, but uh, I think every Greek American in Delaware voted for me because they <laughs> no, 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 no. By the way, as some of the Delawareans will tell you, that's why I acquired a nickname I'm very proud of. I am Joe Bidenopoulos. <laughs> and that's a nickname I got. So, Your Eminence, thank you for that, that introduction and for reminding us of the core values to unite Greece and America and so many other people around the world. Welcome to the White House, everybody. This is your house, and you're one of the reasons why, as I say, I'm here and why this house is here. Today, we celebrate 203 years of Greek independence, 203 years. And we celebrate the ties of friendship and family between Greece and the United States that stretch back even longer than that. Archbishop, the folks in this room embody those ties. We have proud Greek Americans here, and the worlds of science, journalism, academia, finance, as well as small business owners, religious leaders, public servants from all across America. And together, together, you truly embody the breadth of the contributions that the Greek American community delivers every day for their country and communities all across the country and all across the nation. I want to make, I want to welcome Eleni who is here. Uh, she is the uh, Lieutenant Governor of California. But before that, she's an ambassador of the Biden-Obama — the Biden — the Obama-Biden administration. And, uh, and she took — anybody who could take care of Hungary in those days can handle anything. <laughs> but you've been a great friend for many years. And thank you. And welcome to the ambassadors from Greece and Cyprus who are here. Raise your hand, guys. I don't know where you are out there. There you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As well as the United States ambassador to Greece, an old friend of mine. I asked him to be the ambassador. I hope he forgives me, but he's doing a great job. George Tunis. George Tunis, where are you? There you are, George. If you allow me to name a few additional friends here today. Now, look, I went to the University of Delaware. Everybody tells me the great schools they went to. All my kids went to Penn and George and all these other they, — they didn't go to a really great school. I went to the University of Delaware. <laughs> and the president of the University of Delaware happens to be a Greek-American standing right in front of me here. <laughs> the president of the University of Delaware, Dennis Asanas, and Eleni, who is really the president, I think, his wife. <laughs> Mr. President, you're making me very proud and the university very proud. And uh, look, I see some old friends out there. Andy and Mike Manitos. Guys, you, uh, you go back a long way with me. You're one of the reasons why I'm here, for real. This is not hyperbole. I'm not exaggerating any of this. It's the reason why I got here. And by the way, it's though he's not here to, although he's not here today, I just got off the phone with an old friend of mine celebrating his birthday everywhere, uh, elsewhere with his grandchildren, my friend Father Alex. He's said, so <laughs> He is my friend. From the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America. And by the way, I have a, and he and I have traveled the country and the world together, including in Greece. And on more than one occasion, I visited his all holy the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, who is a great, great friend and a great, great man. Remember, he was having a little trouble being held in another country. We have made it clear that if he wasn't taken care of quickly, we may have a problem with the United States. And two years ago, I was very proud to give Father Alex 
uh, by the way, the medal, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. You know, uh, my friend, to be very blunt about it, my sister and I all year look forward to this reception. And some of you know, uh, uh, the fact is that uh, we're in a situation where I have found lifelong friends in this audience, mentors in this country. I found inspiration in the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, which has been a clarion voice for social justice for decades. You know, I'm an Irish American. I know that shocks you all. <laughs> but we have, I felt a deep kinship in the Greek American community. So many grandparents, so many great grandparents started out in America just to, just to close in the back like my ancestors did. I went on to build good lives for themselves, and even more importantly, good futures for their families. And so many of the values I grew up with, the values my Greek-American friends grew up with as well, like treating everyone with dignity. My dad used to say, you know, Joey, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. It's about being able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay. Like treating everyone with dignity, no matter who they are, working hard, dreaming big, never forgetting where you come from, and always holding on to the pride, pride in your family, your community, your heritage, and above all, pride in the great country we share together. That pride is felt by so many immigrant communities all across America, and we celebrate that today. Today is about friendship. Aristotle said, a friend is a single soul dwelling in two bodies. A friend is a single soul dwelling in two bodies. And that's what we are. We're friends. To me, that captures the relationship between Greece and the United States. I believe the soul is the breath, the life, the essence of who we are. And the soul is what makes us us, in my view. America is the only country on Earth built on an idea. Every other country is based on ethnicity, geography, religion, and other attributes. But America is based on a simple idea, for real. We're not based on geography. We're based on an idea. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain in inalienable rights, et cetera. You know, that we're all entitled to be treated with decency, dignity, respect throughout our lives. And democracy must always be defended because it's the vehicle that allows it all to happen, makes all this possible. And you all know where that idea came from, democracy, where it was born. In Greece a millennia ago, where some of the greatest thinkers in world history conceived the notion of we the people, that's where it came from, we the people. Demos and democracy can and should control our own destiny. In my view, it's the precious gift the Greeks, uh, Greece has given the world. And that gift can give rise to our nation and gave rise to it. America's founding fathers studied ancient Greek thinkers and leaders. Our revolution in 1776 was inspired, literally, not figuratively, inspired by their ideas. I know we always say this, but I wonder whether we really fully, totally appreciate what it was. Forty-five years after that, Greek patriots fought for their own independence, galvanized by America's quest for liberty. And that's why the anniversary of Greece, in, Greece independence is a special day in America as well. Our nations are connected. We have shared values, shared aspirations, and shared belief in all that is possible. I was once asked by Xi Jinping, and I traveled 17,000 miles with him in Tibetan. I was out at the Tibetan Plateau. And he looked at me and he said to me, can you define America? And I could say the same thing if he asked me to define Greece. I said, yes, one word. And I mean it sincerely. It's, reg it's recorded. I said one word, possibilities. Possibility. We believe anything's possible. When we, the people, come together for the common good, the bonds between us are rooted in our history, but they're very much alive today. In this very room, together we're keeping those bonds alive. The people of Greece, the people of the United States, did not just inherit democracy. We have to be its defenders. It has to be every generation champion. We must be its champion. And that's as important today as it's ever been. And that's not hyperbole. So I want to thank you all for being here to celebrate liberty. I want to thank you for your commitment, making it real in our time the ideals that sparked our two nations' struggle for independence more than 200 years ago. 
And may both Greece and the United States continue to lift high the lamp of democracy so we can always serve as the beacon of hope for the world. So, folks, happy Greek Independence Day and welcome to your house. Thank you. For your